Welcome back to Dead Good Book Reviews. I'm Judith and you're watching another book review here on the channel. It's been a while since we've done a dedicated book review, but I'm here because I'm excited to talk to you about the Daughters of Izdahar. -da -da -da. Here is the cover. This is what it looks like. The reason I don't have a physical copy of this book to show you is that I was sent a digital review copy of the book from the publisher via NetGalley. Regardless of where books come from, nobody's paying me to talk about books and all opinions are my own. I'm going to keep this as spoiler free as humanly possible. If you do want to go into this book knowing absolutely nothing, click away now, but I'm not going to reveal more than some blurb of the book. I will also link the story graph for the book below in case you want to check out any user generated content warnings. This is a fantasy book that's come out from Orbit on the 10th of January 2023 in case you're watching this video in the future. I'm a little bit late with this review, don't worry about it too much, there was too much content to get out at the start of the year. Hadir El Spy is an Egyptian American author and librarian, which makes a lot of sense, there's a lot of love for literature in this book. It's not a book about books but I can definitely, you know when you can just sense that somebody respects books? The Daughters of Izdahar follows two very different women living in one city. We have the wealthy, somewhat spoiled Nahal, who at the beginning of the book wants nothing more than to attend the Weaving Academy, which is not about weaving cloth, it is about learning to wield her elemental powers. She is a water weaver and she would like to go to the Academy and learn. However, though the Academy now takes women, they won't take them without permission from the man who is in charge of them, their father if they're unmarried or their husband if they are. Georgina is a poorer woman, she is a bookshop worker and secretly is an earth weaver, she has earth elemental powers, and she is working with the daughters of Izdahar who are a group in the city who want to encourage women's rights, they are fighting for women's rights, particularly the right to vote. Nico, who is Nahal's new husband that she is uh, arranged marriage to, in, uh, in an arranged marriage with, that's probably a better way of phrasing that, uh, ends up bringing the two women together in a somewhat unlikely way, and there's a lot of politics going on in the city, and ultimately it is this uh, fight for women's rights at the centre of it all. In that way that always happens for fantasy heroes and heroines, they find themselves swept up in something much bigger than themselves. I thought the world for this book was really cool. It is a world inspired by, but not um, directly referencing, the history of contemporary Egypt, uh, which I think was really interesting uh, for one thing, and I think uh, made a really creative world and I liked that it wasn't a direct I am telling a fantasy story in this city that does exist but it was just drawing on those cultural elements I thought that was really fascinating I also obviously always like elemental powers I always think they're gonna be cool I don't care if they're overdone I want more elemental powers please I just love them they're so good and I think that the way they were kind of uh, built into society and yet somehow still taboo was really interesting. I feel like magic is illegal is something that has been done quite a bit uh, and I really liked this idea of you know well you can do it but there's specific circumstances was very interesting. Obviously a lot of the story of this book is centered around a fight for women's rights in this particular world and it's a very poignant topic at the moment for obvious reasons um, but I think one of the things I really liked about this book is it managed to do that in a way that wasn't the thing that really bothers me where the book just becomes utterly miserable uh, and and downtrodden. It is a very triumphant book while still acknowledging the fact that this is a struggle in a system that is designed for these women to fail. Um, it's really un unfair things happen, unjust things happen, but the overall feeling of the book is this striving for change, which I thought was really powerful. So where in the past I've read a lot of books and I have critiqued a lot of books that are, uh, we're telling the story of these women, and then you read it and you're just like, oh, I'm just sad now. This felt much more impactful than that. I'm also going to throw in a, a fourth pro for this book. It is bisexual. That is not a secret. It is in one of the eyes ISBNs is like a uh, categorization for bisexual, which I need to look up more. Um, but yes, bisexual representation in this book. Yes, thank you. There you go. You're welcome. Bisexual fantasy. It's the year. It's 2023's our year, guys. <laughs> Not to just focus on that. Relationships in general within this story. There's quite a lot of uh, romance and romantic feelings. One of the things I thought was really good was that this acknowledged that relationships are complicated. And I think often in this kind of book, which is not YA, but I think it could be read by people who very much enjoy YA. It would be a good transitional book. I think often there is this desire to paint relationships as very black and white. You know, um, I either am your enemy or I am your lover and maybe we can make a journey between the two, but we will be in one of the two states. And I think that this book really acknowledges kind of the messiness of relationships, particularly when you're dealing with these complicated circumstances of people being in relationships who might not choose to be in that relationship, but how do you make it work? And people in this society where some things are uh, repressed and need to keep, be kept secret and what's where are the boundaries of this? And I really liked getting to explore that that kind of messy feeling. It was really interesting. And I'm excited to see where that goes in the next book. And I really hope that it's not a case of um, everything got messy at the end of book one, so we need to smooth it out at the end of book two. I'd really like to see that, that kind of, oh, what's the word? 
um, complicated relationship move forward. I think it would be interesting. I mentioned this isn't YA. I think it could be read by people who do enjoy YA. I think if you're a person where YA fantasy is not your thing at all, I wouldn't worry about it in this context. I just think that it has a lot of those similar familiar uh, tropes and ideas within this adult fantasy book. I think when I read this towards the end of 2022, I wasn't expecting it to stick with me in the way that it did. Uh, and possibly it's because I was reading so much stuff that I really wasn't enjoying towards the end of the year. Uh, and just in contrast, this felt much more interesting and much more well written, I suppose. Um, but I think also there's something to be said for um, just good books. Uh, there's a lot of things that have felt really mediocre recently. I've had a lot of things that I've just been kind of rating like three and a half, four stars and moving on with my life and not remembering them. And The Daughters of Izdahar is one where I really wanted to sit down and film this review because yeah, it definitely did uh, get me excited. And even though it's a fantasy duology, which might mean that book two is not as good, I still hold out hope and I'm making this video to remind future me that I really enjoyed book one. <laughs> Other things you could read if you wanted to read this, I think The Jasmine Throne would be a really good example, um, particularly for the kind of queer relationship in that. And again, things being slightly messy and confusing. I also think other books that kind of have similar themes, um, obviously Once in Future Witches by Alexi e. Harrow is one that people bring up a lot. I think if you want more of a novella, Upright Women Wanted by Sarah Gailey is a great example. Looking at that kind of uh, Egyptian history, there are a lot of books out there that I don't need to list. You could definitely just look them up. Um, I think there's a lot out there if you want books similar to this. And likewise, I think this is similar to a lot of other books. And yeah, there's a lot to be said for this. Should you read this? My feeling is yes. I think it's a really good example of a uh, engaging, fast paced fantasy breed. Um, I would maybe say if you are completely overwhelmed with reading at the moment, I would wait until the sequel comes out. I'm really interested to see how it goes. But in the meantime, maybe get yourself a copy. It could just sit pretty on your shelf. You know, that's fine. Have you read this? Do you have plans? to let me know down in the comments below while you're down there commenting. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. It makes me feel loved and appreciated. You can also follow me on social media. Come hang out on Discord where we have chill chats about books. I'd like to say a huge, enormous thank you to all the ghosts who want me over on Patreon. They support the channel and in return get early access to videos, bonus content and live streams. If you would like to join their number, that's linked below as well. Thank you so much for watching. That's all from me and I will see you in the next one. It's gonna be some bloopers now. Uh, the reason I don't have a beautiful finished coffee to waft. Well, <laughs> the reason I don't have a beautiful finished coffee. The reason I don't have a beautiful finished coffee. The reason I don't have a finished coffee. Oh. The reason I don't have a physical copy of this book to waft at you is that I was. Uh, in that way that fantasy heroines get. In that way that fantasy heroes and heroines. Look. <laughs>